Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about audio, so how to play sound and music in Godot. Uh, the basics is pretty simple. You just use this node called an uh, audio stream player. So let's go ahead and create a new 2D scene here. And as a child, we're going to add audio stream player. So audio stream player 2D is positional sound. This sound will get dimmer the further your camera is from it. If you don't care about that and you just want to play some audio, you can just use audio stream player. That's what we're going to use first because it's more basic. So there we got it in our scene hierarchy here. Now for some properties. So if you select it, first of all, you want to look at its stream property and this can either take a .wav file or a .ogg file. So let me go ahead and get a um, WAV file so we can play it. Okay, so drag your sound into your file system tab. So we have it there. Now drag it into the stream property of your audio stream player. And then um, if you turn on playing, so you notice when you turn on the playing property, you can hear it playing even in the editor. Um, but obviously all of these properties you can edit through the code. So if you just set the playing property to true through your code, you'll also um, hear it playing. All right, and that's the very basics of how you get um, something playing. Now, if you want things to loop, you have to first select the sound that you want to loop into your, in your file system tab, select it, and then go to the import tab here and make sure that you choose looping right here. So when you do that, now when the sound is played, whether it's played through the editor or in the game, it's gonna loop. Now, whenever you change any of these settings over here, you wanna click re-import. Okay, so next I wanna show you some properties and methods of the audio stream player um, that you might wanna edit. And again, you can edit these through the inspector tab of the editor or through code, you already know that. So you have the stream property and that is basically just the file that's playing. So you can just use the gd.load function, pass in the path to the file that you want to play, and you can only play WAV files and OGG files. So WAV files are much bigger, but they're not compressed, so you can play hundreds of them at the same time. OGG files are compressed, so they're much smaller, but you can only play a few of them at a time because it needs computational resources to uncompress. That's basically the difference. So what that means for you is for WAV files, um, usually for little sound effects like gunshots, things like that, short sounds, you want to use WAV files. And then for long sounds like background music, um, you want to use OGG. And I already showed you in the editor for the stream property, you can just drag your WAV or audio file from the file system tab to the uh, value of this property. The play method is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to play the sound and optionally you can um, tell it from what position in seconds to start. So I can do play and then I can pass three and that, would, that will say play the sound but start it from um, three seconds in. The playing is a getter only. It's a boolean um, and it's going to tell you whether the sound is currently playing or not. The stop method, you call that when you want to stop playing the sound and that will, you know, move the position back to the beginning. If you want to pause it and unpause it, use this, the stream paused property, which again is a boolean. So when you set it to true, it's paused. When you set it to false, it's unpaused. The seek method can be used to fast forward, I guess, through the sound. So let's say you want to go to five seconds in, call the seek method and pass five here. That's again in seconds. The volume dB property is the volume. Now one weird thing about this is that zero is the loudest and negative 80 is the uh, lowest. So this has to be negative 80 to zero. Okay, next I want to quickly cover audio stream player 2D. This is the positional sound and the volume of the sound is a function of how close the sound is to the center of the screen. So the further the sound is from the center of the screen, the dimmer it sounds. The closer it is to the center of the screen, 
uh, the louder it sounds. And by the, by the center of the screen, I mean the center of the window, the Godot game window. Here are some properties for the Audio Stream Player 2D. So the Audio Stream Player 2D has all the properties um, that I talked about over here of the regular Audio Stream Player, but in addition, it has these properties. So the attenuation, this is just an integer. Um, this is basically how fast the sound dims um, the further it goes from the center of the screen. So the higher this value is, the faster the sound will dim as it gets further to the um, from the center of the screen. So um, let's say you have two sounds and they're both the same distance from the center of the screen. The one with the higher attenuation will be dimmer. Max distance is you know how far um, the sound can be heard from maximum. So let's say that the max distance is 500. If the sound is <clears throat> excuse me, if the sound is more than 500 uh, pixels from the center of the screen, then it won't be heard. The area mask. This is an integer and it's a mask. It's basically we'll go over this uh, in more detail in, in a future tutorial, but it's just a way for you to make it so that um, the sound only plays in certain areas. Okay, so let me go ahead and delete this scene right here. We don't we don't want to save it. Now I want to create a new scene and I want to basically attach a sound to a little player and I want to move the player around and I want to show you that, um, well let me back up, I want to attach a positional sound, so an uh, audio stream player 2D. I want to attach that to a player and I want to see as the player moves further from the center of the screen, I want to show you guys that the sound gets dimmer. Um, this will also allow us to control sounds through code. So first let me make a scene for the player, make it a 2D scene. Let's add a sprite. And also let's add an audio stream player 2D. Okay. So notice that that's a child of the player, so wherever the player moves, the audio stream player 2D will move. Because remember that the position of a child node is relative to a parent node. Okay, all right. Now let's go ahead and set an image for the texture. All right, that's what the player looks like. And now let's add a script to the player. Make sure you choose C sharp. That's what we do all of our programming in. And let's call it I guess player. That's C sharp. Now I'm going to create this and open it up in VS Code. Alright, I'm just going to add a little bit of code to move the player around. I'm going to add this in the process method. Um, I'm just going to detect the keyboard keys that are pressed and in response to them I'm going to um, move the player. Let me write the code and then I'll show you real quick. Alright, so here's the code to get the player to move in response to the keyboard key. Pretty basic. Um, we just detect if W is pressed, move them a little up. If S is pressed, move them a little down. If A is pressed, move them a little left, and so on. Uh, this is pretty basic code. If you would like, you can pause here um, to look at it. But this isn't really the important part of this tutorial. This is just to get the player moving. Now, go ahead and save your scene. Call it player. That's what I did. And let's test to make sure that this works. So there we go, we got our player moving. All right, now next, we wanna play this sound and uh, we wanna see the sound, uh, the volume change as the player uh, increases and decreases his distance from the center of the screen. So let's go ahead and do that next. So first of all, what we wanna do is get a reference to our audio stream player. And this I'm gonna do in the ready. So, um, well, we can even, should I do this? I'm trying to debate whether I should do this through the code or through the editor. Well, let me do it through the code so you guys can see an example because you already know how to do it through the editor. So we're going to override the, the ready. All right. Okay, so let me again. Um, write a little bit of code here and then um, I'll show you and I'll explain it to you. Okay, so in the ready method of the player, so as soon as the player enters the scene tree, what we're going to do is we're going to use the get node method to get a reference to the 
audio stream player of the player. And then we set the stream. So we use gd.load to load our wave file. I just called mine short sound.wave. It's right over here. We load that wave file and we assign it to the stream property of the audio stream player. And then we simply call the play method to start playing it. And now uh, let's go ahead and run this scene. And as I'm moving the player around, um, pay attention to the sound volume. So when the player gets close to the center of the screen, it should be louder than when the player goes way off the screen. Um, I'll show you. So you notice how the further my player got from the screen, the center of the screen, right? The further the audio stream player got from the center of the screen because the audio stream player is a child of the player. So it basically moves with the player, right? So the key thing here is, is that the audio stream player 2D, the further this is from the center of the screen, the lower its volume is. Now you can control that how fast it lowers the volume as it goes further from the screen by modifying the attenuation property. So let's do that in the code. So we'll do stream player dot attenuation and now I'm going to set it to 10, which means that now, um, even if I'm a little bit far from the center of the screen, the volume will be much lower. So let me show you. So notice the center of the screen is right here, right? We're only this far and look, you can practically not even hear the sound. Now watch as I get a little closer. You can already hear it much better now. So that's what attenuation controls. So that's what attenuation controls, right? Um, higher attenuation means that the sound uh, volume gets lower faster as you go away from the center of the screen. Okay, so now I'm gonna do an optional review and I'm, I'm saying optional because really the tutorial ends here. Um, this review is completely optional if you just wanna summarize everything, okay? Uh, so we have two main nodes in uh, Godot for playing audio. The simpler one is audio stream player. And then we also have an audio stream player 2D. The audio stream player 2D is just a, what we call positional sound. Its volume will be dimmed as its location gets further from the center of the screen. So these are some properties that the audio stream player has and the audio stream player 2D will have all of these properties as well and more. So let's look at the properties. The stream property is basically going to point to your wave or OGG files, and those are the only two that are supported. We said that wave files are big, they're, um, but you can play many of them. They're better for short little sounds that you need to play often and a lot of, like um, gun fires, explosions, um, little sayings, stuff like that. OGG files are much smaller because they're compressed. But because they're compressed, you can only play a few of them because they have to decompress before playing. And that decompression takes um, uh, computational resource. The play method can be used to play the sound. And optionally, you can specify how many seconds in you want to start playing. The playing attribute is a Boolean. It's getter only, and it tells you whether the sound is playing right now or not. The stop method stops the sound. The, if you want to pause it, use the stream paused uh, boolean property. So if it's true, the stream is paused. If you set it to false, the stream will unpause. The seek method can be used to go to a certain position in the sound. The position is in seconds. So for example, if you do seek 5, it means seek to 5 seconds in the sound. The volume db property is a, is a, a float, and this controls you know, the volume of the sound. It ranges from negative 80, the lowest, to zero, the highest. The audio stream player.
player 2D has all the properties and methods that we just talked about, but it also has these additionally. The attenuation, we saw that. This determines how fast the sound dims um, as it gets further from the center of the screen. The max distance is how far from the center of the screen is this sound heard from maximum. So for example, if the max distance is 500, then once the sound goes beyond 500 pixels from the center of the screen, you can't hear it anymore. And the area mask, don't worry about this, but you, you know I just want to put this in the back of your mind. Um, you can have the sound only uh, play in certain areas, and we're going to talk about areas in future tutorials. So that's it for this tutorial. I'll put up these slides um, as well as the code uh, in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.